So, have you missed me? I'm back now. Okay. <laughs> so, but I will be very quick. So uh, we have eight minutes, and and uh, uh, maybe it's fine if we run over with a minute or two. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to share with you, um, yeah, just a couple of, of of data points actually from 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 Georgia. Uh, and uh, then also, yeah, if there are any questions that you have for, for me and James, uh, we could also do a, a quick Q&A. Otherwise, we will be here, yeah, during the rest of the day, tonight, etc. I will, however, leave to the airport at like 1.30 a.m. And my flight leaves at 5.45 a.m. tomorrow. And then I'm flying via Kiev to Stockholm and I will land at 11. So I don't know how much I will sleep tonight, but that's <laughs> yeah, going to be a problem tomorrow evening, I guess. So uh, basically what we've done uh, is that we just did, before we came here, we thought it would be yeah, fun to just have some, some data on Georgia as well. So normally what we do our um, yeah, universal talent survey, we have a, you know, a lot bigger data set than this. And we're also planning to do a, a, a bigger survey uh, in Georgia. Um, uh, during Q1 next year, but we basically, you know, Ladi uh, did a great job. Uh, we put together a survey. Uh, yeah, we here you can see the field period. So we had it online for a couple of days, and we were able to gather a thousand respondents. Um, uh, half of them students, half of them professionals, and we asked them, yeah, some of the questions that we normally ask in the University Talent Survey. Um, so we started to ask them about their career goals, uh, what do you think are the yeah, top career goals for, for talents in Georgia? Sorry? Manager, director, sorry? President, yes. Salary? If we're thinking about more softer things, uh, or are there any softer things? A wife or president? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <coughs> sorry. Okay. So basically, we have nine career goals at Universum. We've actually we don't have the remuneration aspect as one of those nine career goals. But you saw the drivers that we had, the, the four attributes. There we have a whole driver about remuneration and advancement opportunities. But when we looked at you know, the, the nine career goals that we have in our survey, we can see this. To have work-life balance is the number one, followed by to be dedicated to a course or feel that I'm serving a greater good. That's actually the second one. Then you can see to be a leader, manager of people is actually number three here. Um, and you can also see that it's a bit, yeah, it's only a couple of percentage points, but look at among, more attractive among the professionals. Um, so I think that this is really interesting to see. So work-life balance. And I would also say that, I mean, in almost all the countries where we're, you know, looking at the data for the, for the career goals, we have work-life balance on top. But I think this one is, is really interesting, you know, to be dedicated to a course of field that I'm serving a greater good. And that's very connected also to what I was talking about earlier with the purpose of the organization as well. Um, okay, um, so that was just one uh, data point. Uh, we also asked them about, you know, how they learn about employers. How do you think that they do that? Friends. Friends. Facebook. 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 Job sites. Advertisements. Yeah, so I just want to stress here, so we're looking at direct channels here, not indirect channels, from friends, people who work there, etc. Those are, you know, indirect channels. So these are channels that you, you know, directly can influence, you know, channels you can buy for money, to be very <laughs> uh, simple. So here you can see social media, number one, Number one among students, but among professionals, actually, the employer website um, is, is, is the number one. So very, very clear, social media, just like James and I have said many times here, it's, it's, you know, it's a key channel also here in Georgia. So I think, you know, really leverage that and think about that. And also just my, you know, I've been here for 
40 hours, so I'm not claiming to be an expert on the market, trust me, but you know, just from my understanding from the people that I've spoken to and so forth, that you know, there are still, you know, I think a big opportunity for organizations to focus on social media because there's you know, very few employers that are doing a really good job there to really you know, make a difference uh, and make, have a huge, huge impact. Now maybe that's exactly what all of you are going to do on Monday, so then it will be a tough competition, of course. But I think that that's a, a great opportunity. And then one thing about the employer website as well. I think that the employer website is something that sometimes is, is quite forgotten. And I get the feeling that every time I ask a company about their employer website, they're like, yeah, you know, we're, we're looking at it. It's always like in progress. It's like, yeah, we're going to, you know, we're working on it. We'll, you know, might do something next year. Like, have you like even been on your own career website? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah I know. Uh, like, so do, do you recognize that? Yeah. Yes? Yeah? Good, yeah. good. <laughs> so it's not only me. Uh, so, and then you focus a lot on maybe you know a couple of events or you know other things ca career fairs but you have to keep in mind that you know it's number two total and among professionals is the number one channel so think about that you know how you present yourself um, on your career website is is super important and also a great tool for you to be able to yeah differentiate yourself and so forth and of course also link that content to to um, um, to uh, to social media. Then, of course, you also have the in-person channels here as well, headhunters, recruiters, uh, and also employer uh, office uh, site visits. So they want to come and see what it's actually like there. Okay. Then we also looked at you know the you know which employers they wanted to work for. So we had a a, a list of eighty-eight uh, employers. Uh, in Georgia, we will only show the top five today to you know keep the excitement and the conversation going. Um, so basically, how it works, and this is also the methodology uh, that we have, and also that's also why we want to have a much bigger data set than just a thousand respondents, five hundred students, five hundred professionals, because we want to be able to break this down and look at you know female engineering students and want to have a reliable data set. Now we have you know we have. 500 overall students, 500 overall professionals. So that's also why I want us to take you know, this data with, you know, it's, it's interesting, it's relevant, but still we can't do breakdowns and look at specific groups, okay? But basically how it works is that we then show them this company list, just like I explained, 88 employers is randomized. We then ask them which of these employers would you consider working for. They can pick as many as applicable, as I told you earlier, on a global average they pick 20? 20? Good, somebody remembered. Br great, you were listening. Uh, and then out of those 20, they then picked their top five ideal employers. On global average, they picked 3.5. And then we also asked them if they have or are planning to apply to those, um, uh, to those employers. So that's kind of the, the methodology uh, for, the, uh, for the ranking. And it also could be good, I mean, since we're talking about the methodology here, to, for you to know that always when we have these rankings, we also have the give the talents and um, uh, the uh, ability to write in companies that they are missing on the company list as well. So they can write in two companies. And then we use then those write-ins uh, to every year see if there are new companies that we should add to the list. Then we remove some companies that all have a low ranking and we add new companies. And that's how we've added, yeah, started adding Google on the list many, many years ago and how we added Facebook to the list in the US and so forth. So out of these 88 employers, among these 1,000 respondents, these were the five top employers. Um, and what we could see, what we could see, uh, like in the, um, um, when we looked at the, you know, the industries represented and so forth, and the 88 companies, we can of course, you know, share with you that, that, that full list. Uh, but what we could see is that, you know, a lot of the banks uh, were were pretty high up in the uh, in the rankings, so it's very clear that you know the, the 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 banking industry is definitely very very strong here in 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 Georgia. Then 
you remember that my computer crashed, right? There was this big crisis, and we didn't know what to do. I was panicking up here, running back and forth, super nervous and everything, but it worked out. What that resulted in was that there were a couple of tweaks that James and I had done with the deck that was not visible in the presentation. And I also put together a really cool slide that I was going to show now, but you just have to envision this slide, okay? So, <laughs> Okay, so I will try to paint you a picture here. I know that you're hungry, probably tired of hearing us talking here. So, two more minutes. So, on this slide, it's really nice looking sl slide with a Georgian flag, a nice picture. Uh, there was, you know, because we have something called the um, Employer Branding Academy um, at, at Universum. And, and the funny thing with the Employer Branding Academy is actually that it was an idea that came up, I think, five or six years ago at an internal conference at Universum. So we divided us into teams, and then we had to come up with new business ideas for Universum. And my group won, yes. And we came, <laughs> and we came up with the concept for Employee Branding Academy. Then we didn't do anything about this for several years. We had it laying around, we brought in some expensive consultant at some point who tried to develop it, they failed, and then was it, one and a half years ago now? Yeah. yeah. We launched Employee Branding Academy. And basically what it is, it's a, uh, I would say, in a, yeah, I'm not trying to oversell it here, but I mean, I think it's an extremely good course to get an introduction uh, into employer branding and how to work with this. You know, the things that we've been looking at today, having, so we're having an online um, platform where you can go through all of this, you'll do a business case internally and so forth. And there are also two interactions with you know, other peers as well, where you sit and discuss this and you present your strategies to them, et cetera. Um, so we will actually launch that also now in Georgia. So the message on the slide was basically that, yes, we will be back here or I will be back here in the beginning of February to kick off the Employer Branding Academy. So you have to envision that with a nice picture, a flag. Yeah, February, okay. That was the slide. Okay. Okay. Cool slide, huh? <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, yes. So uh, I know we're four minutes overdue now, and in Sweden, you know, we're very much start on time, end on time, be respectful, you know, of everyone's time and so forth. That's our culture. I know it varies a lot uh, uh, in the different parts of the world, uh, but so I don't know how stressed you are with four minutes. Is it okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we not remember us like, oh, universe, oh, they're crazy, or oh, they ran over with four minutes, <laughs> completely, um, no respect at all. It's not like that, good. But do you have any, uh, any questions uh, for, me and, for me and James that you want to raise now, together with all the others, or of course we're going to be around for, yeah, many, many hours to come as well. No? Okay, then we also had a, a nice thank you slide in the end as well that you will not be able to see, but you have envision a slide that says thank you and then a photo of me and James, basically. That's it, okay. Thank you so much. And, 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 and if it's okay, can I take a picture of all of you and then maybe Lad and James, do you want to stand in the middle? And then if everybody can wave, because I'm going to take a picture and I'm going to post it on our internal uh, Universum Facebook page. And then we'll see how many likes that we get throughout the day. I'll report that back. So if everybody wa wave and say hi. Good. Thank you so much. I'll report you back to you. Okay.